we decided a few years ago that we should maybe explore alternative businesses to um, s supplement the, the income of the ranch. Well, maybe we shouldn't uh, just be a one-trick pony. We should uh, see what other opportunities might exist. My educational background is in animal science and uh, I had completed my degree not too long ago and I had taken a course on aquaculture. Last year, uh, for the first time ever, aquaculture, world aquaculture, made more money than, uh, than beef as a commodity. If you have a, a concept of, uh, of raising animals and what it takes to grow animals, uh, moving and transferring that knowledge into aquaculture is, is fairly easy. Fish are a very simple animal. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to uh, build systems. You're essentially just building a big version of uh, of a fish tank that you'd have at home, all the all the parts are uh, are essentially the same. You you need a a biofilter, which is what the gravel in the bottom of your fish tank is. You need a, a f water filtration system, and uh, you need a pump to aerate the water. Uh, Arctic char is a very good uh, intro species, a very good species uh, to get your feet wet. In other words. You purchase eggs, you bring them in and hatch them. It takes around a month to hatch them and then you uh, grow them out to two to four pounds. And so it could take uh, between a year or two years to grow them out to market size. They're a very simple fish to raise. If you live in a, a kind of northern climate, they like to be cramped, they like to be cold, they like to be in the dark. And if you can uh, maintain those conditions, then they will will grow and thrive. There's a lot of potential to move into other species once you know the uh, basics of, of aquaculture and it's really not hard to master. So aquaponics system is a kind of a mixture of aquaculture and hydroponics. So only different is uh, that with aquaponics, you use only the natural way to grow vegetables the whole year round. And out here we grow all kinds of different lettuce types, mustard greens, herbs, basil, and we have in our tanks tilapia. Tilapia is a tropical fish and the system is running around on 22 degrees Celsius, so we have to heat the whole year round. And for the heating we use a solar panel, a thermal solar panel, uh, use a geothermal storage underneath the greenhouse and during the colder months we use a biomass heater to heat the fish tanks and the greenhouse too. With the tilapia it has a big advantage that you only need around one and a half pound of feet to grow one pound of meat compared to uh, beef where you at least need 12 to 15 pounds of feet to grow one pound of meat. In central BC it's for me only the local market, so that means any kind of farmer's market we have here in Prince George or the different restaurants which are using it on their menu as a freshwater fish. Why Arctic char? Why farmed? The world has a love affair with animal protein. This love affair is going to be met by aquaculture, but it's going to be met by land-based aquaculture, not ocean-based aquaculture. It's going to be met by land-based. All the environmental groups, including Suzuki and others, support land-based aquaculture. Arctic char has a, a very high market value. It's making up for the uh, declining stocks of halibut and other kind of high-end white cloth fish that are in the wild and uh, it's only growing in popularity as chefs become more acquainted with it. With land-based aquaculture in recirculation takes, uh, recirculation reuses 90% of its water. These systems have been given a, a green rating by Sea Choice. 
aquaculture is seen by many people that are socially conscious as kind of being the answer to the world food shortage. The demand is huge. The oceans cannot sustain that love affair we have for animal protein in the world. The only way that we're going to be able to address that demand is through the raising of fish. Fish are so efficient in producing animal protein that that's the way we will go.